may seem a fairly obvious statement, but there is actually no such thing as clean coal. All the experts from coal mine owners to scientists agree that coal is harmful to the environment when it's mined, when it's transported, burned, and even the ash that's left behind when the coal has been burned, that's still polluting. However, even though coal isn't a clean fuel, there are steps that can be taken to reduce the impact that the use of coal has on the environment, making coal cleaner, even if it is still the most polluting form of fuel. So, why is coal such a polluting fuel in the first place? Well, a lot of it has to do with how it's formed and what it takes to turn the coal in the ground into energy. Coal, of course, was formed from plants that died millions of years ago. Plants were in swamps and bogs, so those plants weren't able to decompose. They formed a kind of peat-like layer at the bottom of the swamps. Over the years, the layer at the bottom became thicker and thicker and thicker. However, because the layer of peat was formed after it was such a long period of time, other items were also mixed up with the plant materials. Anything from animal bodies to volcanic dust would all be part of that layer. The changes in the ecosystem above the peat layer for the thousands of years, and the area can change from a swamp to a scrubland forest or even the sea, and back again to a swamp. Eventually, over time, this will result in different layers of sediment being laid down, with layers of coal being sandwiched between the layers of other sedimentary rock. In order to change a layer of peat-like material, something recognisable as coal takes a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, a lot of time. Most of the coal being over 300 million years old. Initially, the peat is converted into lignite, which is a brown form of coal. It actually still has relatively high water content in comparison to the carbon content. Later on, this lignite is converted to more familiar bituminous coal, which is a black, shiny coal with relatively little water and a high carbon content. Eventually, a small proportion of this coal is converted into anthracite, with even less water and even more carbon. This water and carbon content is really important with coal. It directly affects how much energy you can extract when burning the coal, with anthracite producing far more energy than lignite. The problem is that anthracite is actually a rather rare, make up only about 1% of all the coal used. Even bituminous coal makes up just over 50%. Things like quite a lot of the coal burned is lignite, rather similarly poor quality coals. These lower rank coals require a lot more coal to be burnt to produce the same amount of energy. Therefore, they create more pollution than the higher quality bituminous coals. However, the issues with the pollution produced by coal starts a lot earlier than when it's being burned. So let's go through the stages to see what pollution is produced, when, and what can be done to mitigate those levels of pollution. The first place where pollution can be produced is with the extraction of the coal from the ground in the first place. That exact type of pollution and general environmental damage produced will depend on what extraction method is actually being used. It's going to be strip mining, open cast mining, mountain top removal, or even underground mining. Now, no matter what method is generally used, the two major impacts are on water and air around the mine. In the process of extracting coal from sedimentary layers of rock, the miners will actually change the way the underground flows of water or aquifers operate. In addition, it will affect the quality of the local rivers and streams, not only because of the water coming out of the mines or the rainwater interacting with the coal, but also with what's known as the spoil. Those layers of sedimentary rocks which are between the layers of coal are also removed in many types of coal mining. The management of spoil heaps especially in regard to their size and location, is vital in reducing the impact on the surrounding water sources. The air quality is also affected around a mine site, mainly by the dust produced by coal mine extraction. But the large machines and larger explosive charges used when mining coal generally reduce the costs of coal mining. They can produce more dust and scatter it over a far wider area. This dust represents a major hazard to human health. It's related to how the coal was actually formed in the first place. A lot of the coal is actually carbon in the form of ancient plants, but also a great many other chemicals are present, either in the plants or in the debris which accumulated alongside them. 
As the coal matures and the water is removed, these chemicals, like carbon, also increase in concentration. A great many of these are toxic, like arsenic, lead, radium, and especially mercury. But there are steps that can be used to control the dust with water and dust curtains, but even these measures there still be a lot of airborne pollution created by coal mining. Next issue is related to transportation. Every time you move coal, it creates more dust, especially as the pieces of coal rub against one another. This means that the further you move the coal and the bumpier the ride, the more dust is going to be scattered and gained to the atmosphere. So a short journey by barge is preferable to a long journey on a bumpy rail system. In addition, each time you load or unload the coal at a transport hub, you increase the amount of dust that's going to be released. So ideally, power stations should be sited as close to the coal mines as possible. Steps should be taken to minimise the dust released during transport. This coal is actually used in the generation of electricity in the production of iron, steel and cement. So when coal is actually burnt, there are two major problems. Most obvious being the smoke and gases which actually come out of the chimney. The other major factor is also the ash that's left behind once the coal has been burnt. Dealing with the smoke and gases first. On a global scale, the major polluting gas produced by burning fossil fuels, of course, is carbon dioxide. And coal-fired power stations represent about a quarter of all the additional carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere. Now, it isn't just carbon dioxide that coal burning produces. It releases many of those chemicals like mercury found in the coal dust that I mentioned earlier. In addition, burning coal also releases sulfur dioxide, hydrogen cyanide, and sulfur nitrate, and with microscopic dust particles called particulate matter, which can be inhaled and damages the lungs. The level of some of these chemicals released can be altered depending on what form of coal is actually being burnt. The method used in extracting some of these chemicals from the chimneys of power stations before they reach the outside air. The methods can make coal energy cleaner, but not clean. And that each step in cleaning up the system, of course, makes the energy produced more expensive. Once, of course, you actually burnt the coal, that isn't the end of the matter. You still have to dispose of the ash which is left behind, amounts to millions of tons each year. The ash does contain many toxic substances, and since the ash now represents about 10% of the original mass of the coal, those substances can now be 10 times as concentrated as were, so they were in, in the original form. The risk of these substances can be different. The first of these is radiation. The ash can, can contain significant amounts of uranium and thorium, meaning you're slightly more likely to be exposed to radiation living next to a coal-fired power station than you are next to a nuclear power station. However, unless your exposure is concentrated in some way, some way your exposure levels to radiation are only about 1 or 2 percent higher than just normal background radiation, for instance, about the same level of risk of living in an area with some amount of granite in the surrounding rocks. What's more of a risk, some of the other chemicals, especially heavy metals, are left behind in the residue. Things like mercury, lead, arsenic, and in order to prevent these chemicals from being released in the environment, much of the ash is used in making of concrete or embankments like on the sides of major roads. From here is that far more ash is actually produced than actually needed for these purposes. So in countries where a lot of coal is used, the rest of the ash needs to be stored somehow. To prevent the ash from being blown away, this ash can be stored underwater. And this can cause two problems. If containment such as a dam system fails, the toxic weight can then contaminate a wide area. Alternatively, the chemicals can leach from the storage area into the water supply. Proper construction and maintenance of storage areas can reduce the risk of the environment, but ideally the amount of ash that's being produced should be at a level that can be accommodated by repurposing the waste of the useful products rather than putting the ash into storage. So in summary, energy produced from coal can be made cleaner by selecting the coal that's burnt, by burning the coal in modern power stations, with tough governmental regulations ensuring that environmental damage as small as reasonably possible. However, all of this should only be a temporary measure as energy generation is switched to a less environmentally damaging and now cheaper forms of power generation.